So let's start with your career counseling for individuals. You say on your website, we can provide you with the objective career advice and support you need to make the changes you want as quickly as possible. The skills you learn from working with us, you will use the rest of your life. So where do you start? Well, you got to, you know, I think is is you you got to find somebody's passion. You know, life's too short. And it's more acceptable now to change jobs five years. My days, you stayed in a job. You know, once you start a job, you were there for 30 or 40 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what are the things that you like to do? And if you can get that into a work day, and that may be you have to explore some different things. Do you have them take a test when they come see you? Like, do they take the Myers-Briggs well, test? I've done the, done the Myers-Briggs test, view psychological test in the past. I've had some strong, it's called the strong inventory test, which tells, do you like doing this? Do you like doing that? Mm -hmm. So that helps people in doing that. But, you know, you got to, I tell people, hey, if you want to be a fashion designer, I'll ask them, have you sat down with a fashion designer? No. I said, well, how do you know what a fashion designer do? I said, call a fashion designer. You'll find if you call people, they'll welcome. Go sit down with two or three of them. Say, tell me what you do nine to five, day in and day out. What does a fashion designer do? That is exactly why I started this radio show, because people called me and emailed me asking me advice all the time. And we welcome it. It makes me feel good about myself. You, you got it. You got I mean, you can read about it, but talk to people. And then, then even say, hey, do it as a part-time job and say, okay, I'm going to go work for a fashion designer. The pay is not important. I want to see day in and day out if this is something I really feel my passion for. And like you said before the break, you could even, I mean, just get a job sweeping the floors there. It doesn't matter. Just get your foot in the door and see if you like the feel of the business. And, and you'll be around and you'll learn a lot by, you know, the old thing, you you learn a lot by what, I love Yogi Berra said that. What? You'll learn a lot by watching. Yeah, you will. You watch people. You see what they do. You talk to them. What do you like? What don't you like? But the skills that I think to be successful, I could piggyback on that. Companies are looking for perseverance, resiliency. How are you on building relationships? How do you work within a team? How do you deal with adversity? What's your work ethic like? That's perfect. Those are the kinds of things. Not like, okay, you're supposed to be at work at 8 o'clock, and you show up at 8.05, you get a co go to the coffee pot for a cup of coffee, you go to the bathroom, you go outside, you talk to a few people, now quarter to nine, you're ready to go to work. It drives employers up the wall. It would drive me up the wall. So, you know, th those skills, they're hard to train. Those are skills that usually people have it or not. And I found the best, I tell people, one of the things I like, the best bosses that you can work for have high expectations. I tell them, think back of when you were in school, grade school, high school, college. What professors did you hate the most? And what professors did you learn the most from? Oh, wow. The ones that are the most demanding. You didn't appreciate it at the time. I know it was the same way. But I look back and I can remember those teachers that tested me, that wouldn't take excuses. And I've had a, co I've had a couple bosses, high standards, and those are the ones I remember and appreciate. So I tell especially younger people starting out, don't think, oh, yeah, I got an easy way. You want to talk when you're interviewing. Find out what their step. Go to work for somebody who has accountability. I expect that's the way you're going to learn and grow. You know, as a boss, it took me a long time to learn to be the boss that you're talking about, to really make defined uh, rules and, and enforce those rules. And I, I, I remember I would do some exit interviews with some of my favorite employees and 20 years ago or more, and they would say, I love working here, but you're letting all these other people get away with stuff, and I am the one who's having to clean up the mess. You're spending all your time on your C and D employees and not any time on your A and B employees. And it took me a long time to learn that you, you celebrate the stars and you rotate 
the C and D employees, you try to train them first. You try to make really clear rules, let them know really what's going to happen after one, two, or three um, warnings. And then you really, after three warnings, you really do let them go. And People, I think, they want to know where the boundaries where they are. stand is. Mm-hmm. I do too. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see industry make, bosses, managers, owners don't want to deal with conflict. That's right. They don't want to tell the person, hey, you're not cutting it here. And they wait and wait until they get fed up and it's okay. I've had enough. I'm going to terminate this person. And that's not fair. I've seen that on outplacement where companies lay off people. I had one situation, laid off somebody after 30 years with the company. And I said, well, when did you know that they were, oh, about 10 years ago. And you didn't have the guts to go talk to them about them and give them a chance to change. So I tell individuals, employees, find out, even if your company doesn't do a formal review, you need to ask your boss, hey, I want to sit down and see. I got to know where I am, what you like, where I need to improve. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and then let's flip that. If you're an, an an individual and you're not happy, how is your boss supposed to know? And then one day you blow up or you move on, and your boss is like, "What's wrong?" And you were like, and the and the employee maybe you never appreciated me, or you never saw what I was doing, or you know whatever it might be. Well, people, you know, there was a Likert study, University of Michigan, asked employers. 10 reasons why people leave. Ask employees 10 reasons why you leave. Okay. You know what? They were opposite. Employers put the people leave for money, and that was like third or fourth. Yeah. Employees put, I want to be valued. I want to be included. I want to be appreciated. And I want to, and I want to, uh, I want to grow. And I want to grow. That's yeah. right. And I want to affect change and grow with the company. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I believe that completely. What is it that people should put on their resumes that sets them apart from everybody else? Accomplishments. Companies don't want to hire the average Susie or average Joe. They're looking for the cream of the crop. You've got to get their attention on that resume. What's going to grab action words? This is what we accomplish at group. We raised sales by so much in the company. We made our branch 25% more profitable. We reduced expenses by 20%. What did you do to make an impact on that company? No matter how little you think it is, that's what companies want to hire. And I want to know, I interviewed someone just this week and I said, tell me something about you that nobody really knows. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to know that kind of stuff. It kind of tells you a little bit about them. Sure. It's good if you could find out a little bit. What makes them tick? What was their, what did they do? What did they do when they were in school? What kind of part-time jobs did they have? Find out if they were a waiter or waitress or whatever. Find those things out. So uh, what's the number one mistake that employees or people looking for a job make when they go in on an interview? Not prepared. It is amazing. And you would think with all the Internet, they go in there and are not prepared because sometimes what happens is the person who gets interviewed is not necessarily the most qualified, but the person who knows how to interview the best. Because, see, most can't, when somebody's interviewing, most candidates are fairly, there's not a lot of difference. So the employer's got to make, usually a, you heard the old expression, on a gut feeling. Mm-hmm. If you go there and prepare, you know their company, the history, the comp- the product, where they can. You know something about the person they're interviewing. Mm-hmm. You go in and know that. And then you ask intelligent questions. Like, what are your expectations? What do you expect to be the first 90 days? What are you looking for? Why did the per- why is the position open? Excellent. Is this a replacement? Is it a new position? Why did the other person not work out? Wow, that's a good one. No one has ever asked me that. You know, and what are your expectations in the first ninety days? I they, want to know that. What they you- always ask what the benefits are, but they never ask those questions like, "Why did the last person leave? What are your expectations?" You know, who would, who will be involved? What team? What other people, you say I'll be on a team. What are some of the other kind of people, are? what are their backgrounds that I'm going to be working with? You know, those are the kind, that's what I'm talking about, being prepared. Salary you never ask, benefits you never ask. The employer knows you're there for a paycheck. Eventually, they're going to come out with that and talk about those kinds of things. Wow. 
really good advice. Thank you so much for coming on. I hope you've learned something today that will help you up your business, your independence, or your life. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. Until then, be brave and keep it up. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the picture of Carrie's face in the center of the screen. For more of Carrie's interviews, click either video on the right of the screen. And as always, thank you for watching.